There is an alternative to using the session object. You can manage your own cookies to keep track of the things that you need to know for settings and whatnot for a session. Cookies are really very simple. A cookie is stored in the web browser. You assign the cookie a name and a setting, and when the browser sends a request, it will include any cookies that are defined for your domain. All you have to do is find the cookie among those that were sent to you, and you can read its value to figure out what it is you need to do. One common purpose of a cookie is the automatic login. Some websites have it set up to recognize you when you go to the site. The cookie is used as an ID that will log you in automatically. Another common use is preferences. You may find that a large website will keep track of things that you like to see and point them out to you when you come back to the site. Of course, you're not limited to just one cookie. If you have lots of different things you need to keep track of, you can set lots of cookies. Here is a servlet that sets a cookie in the web browser. This servlet starts off by looking for a cookie by a specific name. If it finds it, it will use the values that are stored in it for display. If it doesn't find it, it creates a new cookie and stores it in the browser. This servlet creates a web page that shows the contents of the cookie. The first thing to do is to get the array of cookie objects stored inside the request object. You see, every cookie stored in the web browser is associated with a domain name. Whenever a request is sent to that domain, all the cookies for that domain are sent along with it. This means the list of cookies is short, it only contains the cookies that have been sent to this domain, and you get the entire list in the form of an array of cookie objects. If there are no cookies for this domain, the array is null. This loop looks through the entire array for a cookie with the name monster. If it's found, its address is saved. If it's not found, the local cookie reference will be left null. If the cookie wasn't found, a line is printed to the page explaining that it wasn't found, and a new cookie object is constructed. The constructor requires the name of the cookie and a string that is the value of the cookie. There are some optional attributes that can be set, but don't expect too much. These attributes are stored in the web browsers, and lots of them don't do that very well. Even if they store them and use them, they may not deliver them back to you. The version number of the cookie is either 0 or 1. Version 0 is the original Netscape cookie definition style. Version 1 is the standard Internet RFC 2101 style cookie. For the most part, you should use version 0 because lots of browsers don't support anything but that original Netscape version. This security setting, if true, indicates the cookie and its value should be transmitted only through a secure protocol, such as HTTPS or SSL. Now this one, the max age, can be important. It tells the browser how long it should keep the cookie. You can specify a number of seconds and have the browser keep the cookie just that long. That way, you can have it keep the cookie and return it for a day or a week or a month or a year or whatever period of time you would like. If you set the time to zero, the cookie is deleted immediately. If you set it to a minus one, the way it's done in this example, the cookie only lasts as long as this session lasts and will be deleted as soon as the web browser shuts down or moves on to another domain. Looking at some of the cookies on my system shows that the ones with automatic login are set to a month or two, and they're updated every time I log in, so as long as I go to the site once a month or so, I'll be logged in automatically. In this example, we only update the cookie information in the web browser if it doesn't already have the cookie. That's done with this call to the response method add cookie. If the cookie was returned from the browser, the message to that effect is added to the page and no change is made to the cookie in this program or in the browser. And all that's left to do is finish the page. 
The values stored in the cookie are shown, whether they were inserted locally or they came in from the web browser. Uh, here's how it looks. Here you see the page as it is displayed when no cookie was sent by the web browser. It is specified at the top of the page that no cookie was sent here from the browser, but that means that this program called the add cookie method to send a cookie to be stored, so the next time this page is requested it should show up. And you can do that by simply reloading the page. There. The only thing that changed in appearance on the page is that top line that says the cookie came from the browser, but the values shown are the ones that came with it. Let me emphasize that you may not always get back all the values you expect. What happens is entirely up to the web browser, and there are lots of different web browsers, and they all have their own ways of doing things. For example, you may send an expiration time for your cookie, and that time may be set correctly inside the files of the web browser, but it may not send that back to you as part of the request command. So you may not be able to tell what the expiration date is. That doesn't mean you can't use it, just go ahead and set it and trust the browser to get it right.